How can you stop what you can't see? Well, you can't. Let's take care of that, huh? It's time for TechWise TV. All these mobile devices, temporary people, temporary offices, new branches, and of course the network is growing like crazy. And somehow we're expected to manage and secure it. We all know that success and security is not a binary thing. It's, a, it's all about the gray area. Well, to succeed in this environment, we need to work in terms of risk reduction, increased visibility. People and devices should have access to everything they need to do their job and nothing more. So how can this be done? Well, we start with next generation network access control, covering the who, the what, where, when, how. Yeah, how. We have demonstrations galore with the latest edition of the Cisco Identity Services Engine, covering quick results with the ISE Visibility Wizard, passive identity with Easy Connect, offering a simpler non-802.1x authentication, threat-centric network access control with vulnerability and advanced malware integration, as well as rapid threat containment. ISE is offering to transform the network from a simple conduit for data into a security enforcer, reducing time to detection and time to resolution for all your network threats. Because, after all, how can you stop what you can't see? You can't. So stay tuned. Zia joins me in the lab next. Well, Ziad, having you here, that means that we get to talk about Identity Services Engine, which, in my estimation, and you check me if I'm wrong, has very much emerged as this policy management platform, this central system of truth. I don't know the right way to put it. Am I overstating it, or is this really what we're able to accomplish? No, no, that's very correct. I mean, we went from NAC, and over the years, we've added a lot of things to the product, and you know, where we arrive today is that we're starting with the visibility being central, yep. being able to take the visibility information that ICE can get, share it across the network, and then once we have that data, we can classify and do all the other security elements such as containment. So no pun intended, but that's what I want to see, is I want to see what we're doing from a visibility perspective because you're taking in so much more information, but we're also now responding to this information, which becomes really key, I think, to overcoming this notion of how do we ever get automated when it comes to security. I need a lot of good visibility because I need a high degree of confidence if I'm going to let a system do this kind of thing. And that's what yeah. we're doing today, is we're starting with the visibility and then we're going to talk about the other topic of how we respond based on the visibility information that we have. How fast can we get visible? I mean, how long does it take to begin getting information in and being effective? Because And this leads us to our first demo, which is basically some of the stuff that we have in the ICE to one. So uh, what we have here is the ICE visibility setup wizard. And this is a wizard that allows you to get visibility information configured on the network within a matter of minutes. So we're going to start by looking at the endpoints, network devices, how we talk to Active Directory, and configure this quickly. And with that said, let's go through it. The first thing is I can have an address range that my network is on. And once I go ahead and scan, it's going to go ahead and pull in all the information on these network access devices, and I can also add location. You can see here oh, that nice. I got the uh, San Jose Do you pull uh, that from the MSE, I'm thinking? No, actually with this one, I can add the information within the wizard okay, itself. Nice. And the next thing is Active Directory. And obviously, when we think about Active Directory, we think about the visibility about the users right. that, that uh, use Active Directory uh, on the network. And then I can go ahead and click Next, and now it gives me a summary basically said this is where you have ICE deployed on the network on this particular segment. This is a lab, that's why we, we see a forward slash 24. And then I discovered five devices. I'm talking to this specific AD. And once I click done, that's the really the nice part, is that now it starts to pull in the visibility information. We can see the username, the host name, things such as the NAD location. Mm -hmm. You know, once you configure some other policy, you can start to see things such as, you know, the compliance state of an endpoint and, and all that other stuff. Is this stuff. a common design principle to begin having these dashlets and such that uh, enable you to kind of see at a glance the cross-section of information that you want? What's great about ICE21 is what you see on the screen is customizable. You talk about dashlets. I can have different dashlets based on what my role is. If I'm a director, oh. for example, or, or somebody high up, all I care about is like, 
Do I have the right BYOD number of devices yeah. on the network? It, what about the compliance? What's the percentage of compliance and so on? Whereas w if we're dealing with somebody who was more technical, they probably want to find information about the ICE nodes on the network and whether they're healthy. And you can give them just that view that yeah. they want. Yeah, oh, you nice. can basically, uh, if we go to this page right here, the home, this screen is completely customizable. I can customize this screen by creating, you know, say test, or you know, it's the ad screen, and I can yeah. pick out of all these oh, specific nice. things. And you know, one thing we talked about visibility. We used to think of visibility as device type, so on, and now we can see we got vulnerability, threat, and by the way, we're going to talk about that later on. I was under the impression that there was a requirement for 802.1x when it comes to authentication and such, and that's a good thing, but I think it's a deal stopper for some people in the complexity there. What's our situation with that? We don't have to rely on that one X for getting authentication information. We have this newer feature that's called Easy Connect that allows us to pull in information from somebody logging into AD. So once somebody logs into AD, I can say that, Rob, you logged into AD, I'll take that information, create a session in ICE, and boom, I'm on the network. So imagine now, so I don't have to deal with that one X. However, from a security perspective, we really think that that one X is secure, but we're giving our customers options so now we're going to talk about Easy Connect. And as I mentioned, first, what happens in this process? Somebody connects to a switch port, right? Mm -hmm. And when they connect to a switch port, we can see this is the behavior right here. Is ICE detects that the person or specifically a machine connected to a switch port. We see the MAC address, and we see that this authentication it was based on Easy Connect, and it came on a wired network. So right now, we don't have any information about the user or anything of that nature. So I have employee one. So I want to go ahead and connect using a Windows machine. And now I'm authenticated to uh, Microsoft Active Directory. Notice that now I'm logged in. And if I go back here and I do a refresh, my MAC address changed to employee one. And furthermore, we went from basically giving them limited access to employee login, the authorization profile went from unknown to employee. Uh, and we got that information from yeah. Active Directory. That right. feeds to ISE, and then now we can give them a secure group tag that says, this is who you are at this moment in time, and you're deemed OK for these areas. What we call this is passive identity. That meaning I'm using an external source for authentication, such as the Active Directory, creating a session on ICE, getting you on the network. No need for dot .1x. No need for dot .1x. But still recommended, yes? Still recommended. Okay. We're giving people more options. Does it make sense to talk about our threat response and kind of how we're handling containment now? That is IP? actually the, the next topic. Well, then let's go into Great. it. How so are we handling it? So we talked about NAC before. Mm -hmm. We know what NAC is, endpoint, connecting to the network, and all that you know from a previous history, making sure it's in compliance. Now, what we changed the term from NAC to threat-centric NAC, and the reason why we said that. Because now, we can collect threat information. Mm -hmm. and we can collect this from AMP, and I'm going to show you this in the demo. And the other one, we can collect that information from vulnerability scanners, such as Qualys, such as Rapid7. Oh Those, wow. they scan the network, yeah. and they have a CVSS score. So the official representation of what a vulnerability is ranked as. Right, it's actually in an industry system. That's an industry system. standard, yeah. Right, so we can take that information ah. and write policy on it. So let's take a look, actually, at the policy. So for example, if I'm dealing with a threat that's coming from Qualys, you see here, if the threat Qualys CVS score is greater than one, you know, probably you know, a, a real one would be maybe greater than seven or so, right. then go ahead and quarantine and limit access. And furthermore, what I can do, when someone connects to the network, I can initiate a scan. Ah. So I say, you know, you connected the network, let's make sure that you're scanned, and based right. on the result of the scan, I want to do something about Are you about running it. a risky operating system? Are right. you carrying a, is picked up something at that coffee shop you shouldn't have? Right. So here we have another Windows system. And I can go ahead and connect. So we're going to go ahead and authenticate to the system, et cetera. And I want to go to the web. And I want to be the bad guy, right? So mm -hmm. I have some bad tools right here, and this tool is from the eternallyboard.org site, right? That's suspicious <laughs> right away. And if I go ahead and, and try to download this specific tool, it's called Netcat, and what happens the moment I try to 
download or run this tool, I'm going to automatically see AMP come up here and says that I got uh, threat detected. Right. And so what the beauty about this is now this information has been sent to ISC. So if we go ahead and, and look at ICE, now I got a compromised endpoints. We see the threat coming right here. And, and, it's uh, painful, and then it's telling so you that the source is AMP. Yeah. Right. Now, we also talked about getting vulnerability from these CVS scanners as well. Mm -hmm. I'm showing you here. This is the threat information we got, but the vulnerability right here. There's another vulnerability that we're getting from Qualys, and this is the CVSS score of 7.3. Interesting. And so obviously the idea is we get an industry standard score upon which we have policies that say for our particular network situation in this particular location or whatever it may be, all those factors get weighed into what do we then do as a response. That's right. Okay. So you have another demonstration on rapid threat containment, right? That's right. So let's start talking about this using actually the firepower. And what I have right here is the manager 6.1. And we got an employee violation policy that says if the employee connects to the network with an employee tag, that means we already done the trust tag, classified him as such. And if he's trying to use any one of these services, whether it's gambling, peer-to-peer, -peer, hacking, etc., we're going to shut him down. Yeah. Now, if we were to take a look at the specific threat that is going to basically trigger the quarantine, we're actually looking at this cmd.exe access that will impact a website. One thing before I get into the ICE policy, I just want to show the screen which talks about the integration of how PX Grid works. So what we're having here, we're having the firepower being part of PX Grid, and it's showing that it is part of the ANC group, meaning it's allowed to gather information from ICE and be able to quarantine, tell ICE to be a controller quarantine. Okay. The next thing is really the policy showing if the EPS, Endpoint Protection Services, which basically that's what's going to report from ISC, if that is equal quarantine, that means go ahead and change the tag from employee to quarantine systems, So right? With that, this becomes easy when we talk about the end user and what they're going to face if they try to, you know, get malware or so on. So That's what right now, face. I'm right. an end user right now, and I'm on CNN. But if I were to add things, let's say cmd.exe to this URL and I press enter, we got basically uh. connection reset. So what the employee will see now when they go to Google, they're going to get basically this notification telling them that they have been infected and that they need to go ahead and, and fix the so system. There's a feedback mechanism that said, hey, this is your situation, and I assume that's customizable from yeah, you yeah. know, anything that part of my company policy could be expressed, kind of educate the user on what's happening. That is correct. Wow. Yeah. Ziad, thank you so much. This has been a lot of fun. Great. Four demonstrations. I can't believe you got all this. Thank in. you. Hey, guys. One of the biggest values you could get out of this particular show is the workshop. We do a workshop with just about every one of them. You can look below the video to find a link, hopefully to the live version, where you get a chance to interact with some of the same experts that we use on the show and cover the topic in much, much more detail. It's incredible value, and in case you missed one, you can always go to the archive at techwisetv.com, look them up there, and you won't want to miss it. It's good stuff. Check out the workshops, techwisetv.com. See you there. Security is always a moving target, right? But if there was only one tool that I could recommend, it would be this one. Because the idea of automation and security is an interesting one. But the ability to take action and just stop bad stuff from happening, well, that requires some kind of a collective intelligence, something, something with enough data to make accurate response actions. Because if it's not accurate, well, you're not going to let it take those actions, right? It's just, just too risky. But as you can see, some of that data is already there. But now it's time to harness that through the power of your network. Start doing something with it. Because ISE is not only that key single source of truth that we all need from our networks, it's also now that long arm of the law with the ability to reach out and respond. And this really becomes powerful with the addition of Cisco TrustSec. Hey guys, don't miss the other shows in our policy management series or the companion workshops. We're going to go even deeper live, taking your questions as we do it. Well, that's it. Hey, I'm going to put up all kinds of resources in the show notes at blog.techwisetv.com. You can also follow me on Twitter. I've got updates, insights, all kinds of interesting stuff most of the time. 
You should also follow the show itself, of course. And with that, if you can only remember one thing, however, it's techwisetv.com. All the shows, including this one, can be found right there. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you online.